Good day, everyone. My name is Rosli. I'm from uh, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and you are in a sponsored session by B. Brown discussing drug coated balloons, particularly Pachytaxel and Sirolimus, in trying to create evidence before claims. I have no potential conflict of interest. Drug coated balloon, in particular, Pachytaxel coated balloon, has been in market since around 2005. There has been a wealth of data to support its use in various subsets. But Sirolimus coated balloon has only been there for about five years. The attractiveness is due to the drug, and as we know it, Limus eluting stents do much better than Pachytaxel eluting stents. But the data is not as robust. So the question is, is this a concern in trying to use Sirolimus coated balloon at this point in time without having a wealth of data? You, the key objectives in this session is for you to join us in the, in the discussion about Sirolimus and Pachytaxel DCB, follow dedicated discussion on existing evidence on efficacy and safety for both the DCBs, and share insights about the start of the RESPEC ISR trial and score registry for the next generation B Browns sequin uh, drug coated balloons. This is the agenda. I'll be facilitating the session and the chat master is by Pro Professor Bruno Scheller. Uh, the experience and Pachytaxel coated balloons review and evidence and safety. The first uh, uh, presentation is by Professor Raban Yaga and he's from University Hospital of Basel, Switzerland. Professor Sylvia Otter will then uh, discuss on Sirolimus coated balloon in real life, a start of a large all comers registry and I will be discussing our first in man randomized control trial with the sequin uh, uh, serolimus coated balloon in the treatment of DSISR. And this will lastly be followed by Professor Bruno Scheller from University Hospital Hamburg, uh, Germany. And he will be discussing on the upcoming RISPEC ISR US IDE trial, a next generation Pachytaxel coated balloon. At the end of this presentation, we'll have live discussion and Q&A, and I hope you'll be actively participating in trying to uh, you know, give your comments and ask any questions about the session on, uh, that we're discussing. So without further ado, I will be inviting Professor Yeager to present his, uh, uh, his talk on the experience with Pectexel DCB. Dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, my name is Robin Jäger. I'm from the Heart Center of the University Hospital in Basel in Switzerland. And in the next 10 minutes, I will present to you my experiences with uh, Paclitaxel coated balloons, and I will give you a review on evidence and safety. These are my conflicts of interest. I am the PI of the Basket Small 2 trial. Um, this trial has been uh, supported in part by B. Brown. There are a couple of good, really good indications for drug coated balloons, as you know. The most important indication are the instant restenosis. Instant restenosis have been um, assessed in various um, randomized trials and have shown that uh, DCB are a really good alternative to drug eluting stents in this regard. However, there are other um, fields where DCB have a good uh, track record. For example, the, uh, the small vessel disease where uh, among others, the basket small two trial has been um, active. And there are other indications like uh, the high bleeding risk and also bifurcations where uh, some data have been accumulated. The mechanism of action of uh, drug coated balloon uh, is depicted here. You see in cartoon A an instant restenosis of a drug eluting stent. And in B and C, there is the drug coated balloon coming in, is inflated. And at the end, in cartoon D, there is a nice result. The action of the drug coated balloon is the following. You see here the balloon, the balloon surface on top. And on the bottom is uh, the vessel wall with the endothelium. And in between, there is the matrix coating. This is the active drug and the excipient. 
And the mechanism of action is that, uh, that there is a fast and homogeneous drug delivery into the vessel wall with the inflation of the balloon. The uh, drug is an antistenotic drug, and there is a matrix. Uh, this matrix is responsible for the uh, fast transfer of the drug into the vessel wall. There are mainly two anti-proliferative agents on the market. There is on one hand side the sirolimus or the derivatives of the sirolimus and the, on the other hand side the paclitaxel. Both drugs are used in drug eluting stents also. And uh, the difference between the two is mainly the absorption time in the tissue, paclitaxel has a much shorter uh, absorption time. It's sufficient to inflate the balloon for only 30 seconds the, in order that the drug arrives in the vessel wall. Sirolimus has a longer absorption time. Um, in contrast, Sirolimus has some other advantages, as you see here. Um, Sirolimus is only cytostatic, has a larger margin of safety, and has a much stronger antistenotic activity. And um, in addition to that, the physician reception of Sirolimus is much better because of the better uh, results in drug eluting stents. Paclitaxel has uh, been questioned um, two years ago in a large systemic review and meta-analysis. Um, you see here, this is the Katsanos meta-analysis who has been published 2018. And in this meta-analysis in the periphery, you see here that after one year, uh, DCB versus uh, an alternative treatment had the same results. After two years, with only 12 RCTs, so let's, uh, less than 50% of the RCTs, the randomized trials, there was a higher event rate in drug coated balloons. And at the end of the five years, in only three of these 28 RCTs, there was a higher event rate in DCBs. Um, you see here the same result. Um, and this result has uh, led to a black box warning of the FDA regarding the use of uh, paclitaxel coated balloons um, in peripheral arterial disease. However, this uh, meta-analysis had some major limitations in a PCR statement published 2020. Um, they stated that this analysis is subject to major inherent methodological limitations that prevent reliable interpretation of the primary findings. Therefore, this um, study is questionable. Just to give you a, a short overview of what we think um, is happening with paclitaxel in the organism, I show you this slide from Bruno Scheller. You see here um, that paclitaxel in a systemic treatment um, has um, an amount of 300 milligrams that is used. Um, this is a treatment for cancer, for example. And the local treatment with drug coated balloons, um, this is only an amount of uh, 0.4 milligrams in the coronaries and 5.5 milligrams in the peripheral arteries. And the, therefore, the therapeutic window is really large with paclitaxel, although the uh, margin of action is quite small. The same is true for sirolimus, although the therapeutic window is much smaller. And therefore, um, the, the, the thinking that uh, this um, amount of drug in the, in the, in the organism is uh, toxic um, is not really objective. So what do we have as um, results, real results here um, in coronary artery disease? You see here that uh, a large meta-analysis con in coronary artery disease uh, published um, last year in uh, more than 4,000 patients in 26 randomized controlled trials shows that all-cause death and cardiac death and myocardial infarction and target lesion revascularization after one, two, and three years is always beneficial in favor of DCB. 
part of this data is this data here, the meta-analysis of instant restenosis published uh, within the Daedalus project. You see here that the efficacy of drug-coated balloons is a little bit less than drug-eluting stents. However, the safety is at least similar. You see here that uh, Paclitaxel coated balloons, they have a really uh, good safety, um, uh, safety profile in this indication that is at least as good as with drug eluting stents. And in this cartoon, you see here that on the left side, the balloon, on the right side, the drug eluting stent. The primary efficacy endpoint was a little bit worse in drug coated balloons, but all the safety endpoints are in favor of the balloon. Here I show you uh, some long-term results of the basket small trial. The basket small two trial was the largest uh, randomized trial in de novo small vessel disease and compared drug coated balloons against drug eluting stents. And you see here after three years, there is really a good result regarding efficacy and safety. Cardiac death, myocardial infarction, target vessel revascularization was really similar after this long-term follow-up. This was true after the primary endpoint and is true after three years as well. When we look at cardiac death and all-cause death, there are really low results, low rates of these two endpoints and also similar endpoints for drug-coated balloons and drug-eluting stents. And uh, when we looked at the causes of death uh, within the first 12 months in the basket small trial, you see here in this uh, cartoon that we had 25 uh, death cases in the trial. There were 12 sudden or unknown deaths in, uh, this, um, in this trial. And um, this, this uh, death could potentially um, been associated with the implants or the device used. In the two groups, in the DCV groups, there were much more um, uh, much more deaths um, here than in the drug eluting stent group. But when you look at the really implanted devices or used devices, you see that DS only and DCV only, only two events were occurring, whereas in a group where DCB and stents both were used, there was a, a death rate of eight cases. And therefore, uh, it's really questionable whether the drug-coated balloon or the drug-eluting stents is responsible for this. So, ladies and gentlemen, taken together, DCB represent a novel therapeutic strategy in coronary artery disease, and they are established in instant restenosis and de novo small vessel disease. We looked at the uh, mode of action. Um, the two uh, drugs that are used are Paclitaxel and Sirolimus. And the body of evidence for Paclitaxel is much larger than for Sirolimus. And in large meta-analysis and randomized trials, Paclitaxel had a good efficacy and safety profile. And therefore, there's no signal of increased mortality in patients treated with Paclitaxel-coated balloons in coronary artery disease. Thank you very much for your attention. Hello and good afternoon from Germany. Um, my name is um, Silvia Otto. I'm um, from, speaking from the University Hospital of Jena in Germany and um, my talk will be about Zerolimus coated balloons um, in real life and I will shortly tell you about the recently started score registry. These are my personal disclosures. And the outline for the next few minutes is that I will shortly elaborate on why do we need Cirolimus coated balloons or do we even need that? Um, give a short overview about the preclinical evidence and the existing clinical studies and the sequent SCB study program and tell you more about the score registry. We all know from large randomized controlled trials uh, from truck eluding stent that Lemos trucks or Zerolimus is superior to Paclitaxel and truck eluding stents when it comes um, to hard clinical endpoints like target lesion failure. And this is why doctors believe that Zerolimus might be better than Paclitaxel. The question is, is this, if this is the same for truck coated balloons. 
we know from pharmacological um, side that um, the effects of paclitaxel are dose dependent. Paclitaxel um, leads to an inhibition of smooth muscle cell proliferation and it also inhibits neointima formation. But on the other hand, it leads to metonecrosis and focal wall hemorrhage, which are disadvantageous vessel wall effects. When you compare Lemos versus Paclitaxel drugs, um, we see different effects, cytostatic and cytotoxic effects. Paclitaxel indeed is a cytotoxic drug um, that interferes with demetosis, whereas Sirolimus is a cytostatic um, drug um, that interferes with a G1 phase, um, but here cells remain viable. And due to its cytotoxic properties, Paclitaxel has a very narrow therapeutic range, whereas Sirolimus has a much larger margin of safety. Both drugs are anti-restenotic, but Sirolimus also exerts additional anti-inflammatory effects. However, due to its lipophilic properties, um, Paclitaxel has a fast tissue absorption and a long tissue retention, which, which makes it so feasible for um, a long coating. Sirolimus, on the other hand, has only a slow tissue absorption and a short tissue retention. And comparing again Zirolimus and Paclitaxel, we both know that, uh, we all know that these are um, the anti restonotic drugs that are um, available for treatment of coronary artery disease in the 21st centuries. Paclitaxel is mainly used on truck coated balloons, whereas Lemus trucks are mainly used on truck eluding stents. We have a well-described preclinical and clinical evidence for paclitaxel coated balloons. We have a current class 1A recommendation from the European Society of Cardiology for instant restenosis, and we have a large clinical database, um, including randomized controlled trials and observational studies for indications of instant restenosis as well as the novo stenosis. For Zeronimus coated balloons so far, we have a small preclinical and clinical database. So from an engineering perspective, what are the product needs that a truck coated balloon needs? Um, ideally, the active substance is lipophilic. We need a truck carrier and we need to make sure that the truck um, gets um, absorbed from the vessel wall um, during a short contact time. That makes it challenging um, since Zeronimus is less lipophilic compared to Paclitaxel. Um, and we meet we need a matrix coating to make sure that Zirolimus is getting um, into the tissue um, uh, during balloon inflation of um, 30 to 180 seconds. And it also needs to have a time release mechanism to maintain, maintain therapeutic levels over a certain period of time, let's say two to four weeks. Um, with the Zequen Sirolimus coated balloons, um, these requirements were met. Um, the Zequen Sirolimus coated balloon has a BHT matrix, a butylated hydroxytoluene matrix that controls the release of Sirolimus and creates a crystalline Sirolimus modification. And we know from preclinical studies that it leads to an immediate drug transfer of 14% um, within the arterial wall. And after 28 days, we still have 40 to 50% of the initially transferred Sirolimus dose in the arterial wall. And uh, when we compare paclitaxel coated balloons um, to Sirolimus coated balloons, we know from the preclinical porcine overstretch model that we see similar efficacy, similar reduction of intimal hyperplasia. When we again look at acute tissue concentration in various Sirolimus coated balloons, you see the sequence Sirolimus coated balloon not only has the highest um, acute tissue retention, but also more importantly, the highest retention after 28 days. And this is a short overview about available Sirolimus coated balloons with the indication coronary artery disease. Those are five um, balloons that are on the market. You see the Con tissue concent uh, the truck concentration varies between the different balloons and also the delivery agent varies. Only the sequent Sirolimus coated balloon has the BHT matrix. Other 
balloons work with nanoparticles, phospholipids, and you see clinical evidence varies greatly between those products. And um, frankly, only two um, balloons um, have sufficient clinical evidence um, to be used. So the magic touch from Concept Medical has a few registry and a randomized controlled trial, and also the segment Sirolimus coded balloon from Bepron. When we look at the sequence Hieronymus Code Balloon study program, we have two randomized controlled trials on instant restenosis. One um, we will hear about later. We have two randomized controlled trials for the novo stenosis. We recently started the score registry, and we will have an upcoming larger international trial on um, the novo and instant restenosis. Uh, lastly, I want to tell you about the SCORE registry. This is, this is a true all-comers registry, a prospective um, multi-center international study that um, will take place in Europe as well as Asia. We are planning a sample size of more than 1,300 patients, and um, we include the NOVO as well as instant phase stenosis in stable as well as in ACS patients. The primary outcome variable will be a target lesion failure rate at 12 months as a composite of target vessel MI, cardiac death, or ischemia-driven target lesion revascularization. And um, we are looking also at various secondary outcomes, including duration and compliance of dual antiplatelet therapy, procedural success, and pleading complications. We have an international composed support and supervision team. Me, myself, I'm the principal investigator. Dr. Ramsing from the University of Aarhus is um, serving as a core lab. And we have an internationally composed critical event committee. Right now, um, we are um, done with the first patient in. We could include the first patient in, on April 30th in Jena, and we are currently contracting um, different sites so that we hopefully will um, enroll all the patients within the next two to three years. And this is a short overview about the study centers, as, as I said, Europe, Asia, and also Saudi Arabia. So I would like to conclude um, for Sirolimus coded balloons. Um, I think the concept of implant-free PCI of nothing leaving behind is attractive, visible, and modern. We do have robust, however, small data for efficacy and safety on the Rolimus coated balloon, but we need more evidence. We need randomized controlled trials, especially comparing the Rolimus coated balloons um, versus modern truck eluding stents and also beyond traditional indications like small vessel disease or instant restenosis. We don't know yet um, how about um, late lumen enlargement, um, how the Zerolimus coated balloon acts compared to Paclitaxel coated balloons, and we still have to set um, the duration, the optimal duration of dual antiplatelet therapies and think possibly about the role of new PTY12 inhibitors. And that's my conclusion, and I um, thank you for your attention, and I'm looking forward to the upcoming discussion. I would like to share with you the results of the first in men randomized controlled trial with sequent serolimus coated balloon in the treatment of instant restenosis. I don't have any potential conflict of interest. The question that we are discussing all this while is, is there a role for serolimus coated balloon? I think really the challenge is that uh, when you look at the results, and this has been stated by the first two speakers, that serolimus drug eluting stents in humans have been shown to be clinically superior to paclitaxel eluting uh, stents. And therefore, the interest lies to see whether serolimus DC, uh, drug coated balloon is as good or better than paclitaxel DCB. The challenge is really to coat the balloon with serolimus, allowing enough drug retention to reach the lesion site, adequate drug elution into the tissue, adequate drug tissue concentration in, this, in a certain period of time, for example, at one month, and this will ensure adequate or appropriate inhibition of new intimal tissue proliferation. 
The initial study on uh, um, benchmark was uh, Sirolimus coated uh, balloon catheter was performed by Dr. Clever. And she looked at different crystal modification, either amorphous, crystalline, or mixture of amorphous and crystalline. And this was coated onto the balloon with different agents. And she found that the best was crystalline balloon coated onto a butylated hydroxytoluene, which is uh, the contrast media, at a dose of four micrograms per mm squared. In this study of a porcine overstretch model in preclinical work, it has shown that uh, all the drugs were uh, suitable and efficacious in reducing intimal hyperplasia, but the choice was with the four micrograms per mm squared onto a crystalline uh, modification. Uh, we were very privileged to be given the task of taking up the first in men study, comparing serolimus DCB versus Pachytaxel DCB in the treatment of DS in stem restenosis. This was a randomized prospective multicenter non inferiority analysis st study with a control of sequent please uh, Pachytaxel uh, DCB with a primary endpoint of late lumen loss at six months follow up. There was also a secondary uh, endpoint of procedural success, maze thrombosis rate and binary restenosis rate. The randomization was one into one, and uh, we, were, we recruited 50 patients with 25 in each arm with a clinical follow-up at one month and 12 months and a repeat coronary angiogram at six months. The, I would like to acknowledge the principal investigators for all the study sites in Malaysia. And uh, this was the Cyrolimus uh, DCB. It was based on the sequin new balloon, the same as Pachytaxel DCB, the size of between 2.5 to 3.5 mm in diameter and length of 15 and 30 mm. The clinical, or rather the key inclusion criteria was we accept DS for one or at the most two uh, DS ISR, and the lesion length had to be less than 35 mm. We were also able to recruit if there's lesion at the edge of the stents, but not in, uh, more than 5 mm in length. The key exclusion criteria was fairly standard. And this was a procedural pathway. We prepared the uh, lesion with predilatation with POBA at 0.5 mm, uh, lower or smaller, or at least equivalent to the stent size. We recommended scouring balloon if it's possible, and DCB was only used to deliver, to deliver the drug and not for lesion preparation. We, of course, make sure that we do not touch the vessel, uh, the balloon, and uh, there's uh, no contact of balloon with the liquid, and we do not inflate the balloon prematurely. It was only for a single inflation, and uh, the balloon size was pre-specified to be 1.0 to 1.1 is to 1, to the reference vessel diameter or stent size. And the inflation time was a minimum of 30 seconds, though we recommend until a period of 60 seconds. And the balloon had to cover two to three mm to the distal stent edge or uh, distal to the uh, lesion edge. And it has to be longer than the pre-dilated segment. A maximum of two devices was allowed for each lesion. And a minimum DAPT of one month was uh, recommended. This was the first case that was recruited and it was recruited to the Sironimus coated balloon. And you can see a proximate, severe proximal uh, LED DSISR. And this was treated and that was the results post uh, uh, procedure. And this was the results at six months uh, uh, angiographic follow up. The, Scottish, uh, the first patient was recruited in December of 2015 and the last patient was in January of 2017 and the completion of six months angiographic follow-up was in July, 2017. Uh, the patient characteristics between both arms were no different. And what is interesting is that diabetes was in three out of four patients and one third of patients were uh, on insulin. There was also no difference with regards to the procedural data 
the length or diameter of the previously implanted stents, the number of stent, uh, steady balloons, the balloon pressure, and also balloon inflation time. We studied the, uh, the QCA per protocol analysis. And once again, if you to look at the difference between both uh, groups, there was no difference in MLD, pre, uh, PCI for both in segment and in lesion and diameter stenosis. There was also no difference in the MLD in the final in segment and in lesion between those two groups, and uh, also no difference with regards to the diameter stenosis and acute gain. The follow up was about 180 days or six months, and once again, there was no difference with regards to the mean luminal diameter follow up in lesion and in segment. The primary endpoint of late lumen loss was also no different between both arms of 0.25 and 0.28 in the SCB and also the packet uh, coated uh, balloon. The, the intention to treat group or rather the intention to treat analysis was also showing no difference statistically from both arms, though it was interesting to note that it seems to favor uh, the serolimus coated balloon versus a packet paxal coated balloon with regards to late lumen loss in lesion of 0.26 versus 0.37 and 0.18 versus 0.31. But really, this is statistically not significant. The clinical follow-up at 12 months, and uh, this is uh, interesting because there was no difference in TLR, no difference in stent thrombosis or death, and MACE in the sequence uh, Pecatexel DCB was 16% and 12% in the serol muscular balloon. Statistically, no different. To summarize, or rather to conclude, the first in men serol muscular balloon versus Pecatexel uh, DCB in the treatment of DSISR. Uh, both products were appeared to be safe and effective, and technical success rate was high in both groups. The late human loss was similar at six months between both groups, and this actually uh, proves uh, the uh, study analysis or study design of being non-inferior uh, to pectexal drug-coated balloon. There was also similar secondary endpoints between those two groups. And I would like to thank you for uh, the kind attention, and we'll go over to Bruno Scheller, who will then present uh, the trial that will uh, be ongoing in the U.S. And uh, over to you, Bruno. My name is Bruno Scheller from Saarland University in Germany. It's a great pleasure for me to um, report you on the clinical trial design of the RESPECT ISR US IDE trial. Uh, this is my uh, conflict of interest related to this presentation. Um, we started uh, uh, clinical research with Pacitaxel coated balloons end of the year 2003 with the Pacitaxel ISA1 trial. In this trial, we could demonstrate for the first time that uh, treating instant restenosis uh, with Pacitaxel coated balloon leads to a highly significant reduction of near formation compared to conventional balloon angioplasty. And this angiographic benefit um, uh, is reflected in a long lasting clinical benefit. Uh, in terms of reduction of uh, repeated interventions um, of up to six years. Um, meanwhile, a large number of uh, randomized trials comparing uh, paclitaxel coated balloons with alternative treatments, in most cases, uh, tricoating stents, um, in the treatment of coronary artery disease, including instant restenosis and de novo disease. In this um, recent meta-analysis published by an international author group uh, last year uh, shows in 4,590 patients in the first year um, lower risk for myocardial infarction when using pacrotaxel coated balloons and uh, at three years and beyond a lower all-cause mortality mainly driven by reduction in cardiac mortality. Um, the data loss uh, patient level meta-analysis focuses on the uh, randomized trials comparing pactitaxel coated balloons with uh, draculoting stents for the treatment of instant restenosis. Um, and as you can see, there was uh, some advantage for the stent-in-stent -stent approach in terms of reduction of uh, repeated reverse colorization. However, if you look at the heart endpoints, death or myocardial infarction, 
there was a trend uh, for a lower event rate when using the uh, balloon uh, approach compared to the stand in stand approach. Um, and these data all together um, support the recommendation in the European um, guidelines for revascularization. Uh, we have one A recommendation for the use of a tracheolytic stand for the treatment of instant restenosis, or at the same level of evidence and a recommendation, the use of a paclitaxel coated balloon. Um, what is the situation in the United States? Um, this uh, uh, paper shows you the, the numbers of coronary interventions in the US um, dedicated to the treatment of instant restenosis. And interestingly, this reflects about 11% of all procedures. And uh, this number has been very stable over the years, despite the fact that the use of the metal stand has decreased and we have uh, uh, better uh, newer generation stragalutic stands. Um, the treatment uh, in the United States is about 70% stand in stand, which is, however, an off label approach there. Um, and therefore, we see also brachytherapy and even conventional balloon angioplasty as primary treatment uh, for instant restenosis. Um, therefore, there is an unmet clinical need in the United States due to the fact that there is no uh, coronary tracoated balloon available. Um, so the RESPECT ISR uh, trial um, is a prospective randomized multicenter trial. Um, it will compare the sequent please rex pactitaxel coated balloon with conventional balloon angioplasty in coronary instant restenosis. It is a superiority trial with two to one randomization, DCB versus POBA. Primary endpoint is target lesion failure at 12 months. And in addition, the first 100 patients will undergo angiographic follow-up. In total, 296 patients will be included at 30 sites in the United States and Central Europe. Um, the inclusion criteria require a significant instant restenosis with uh, uh, ischemia. Um, it is allowed to treat up to two uh, instant restenosis uh, lesions within this trial with reference diameter between 2.5 and 4.0 millimeter and the total uh, lesion length each of 34 millimeters to, mit treat to permit treatment of balloon of up to 40 millimeters in length. Um, the primary endpoint, freedom from target lesion failure at 12 months consists of a clinically driven target lesion revascularization myocardial infarction, as well as cardiovascular death. The major secondary endpoint for the 100 patients undergoing um, control angiography will be uh, late lumen loss assessed by a QCA. Um, eligible patients will first undergo uh, lesion preparation. Um, and um, after lesion preparation, uh, according to the uh, DCB consensus group recommendations, uh, will be evaluated if it's an acceptable result of lesion preparation. This means um, no flow limiting dissection, um, type A and B dissections are allowed, and the residual stenosis of less than 30%. Um, if these criteria are not fulfilled, the patient will go to the uh, registry arm and will be treated with drug loading stand. Uh, if the criteria are fulfilled, the patient will be randomized uh, to the sequence please Rex DCB or POBA in a two to one fashion. So, my conclusion is that uh, instant restenosis represents uh, about 10% of all PCI procedures in the United States, stable over the years. Outside US, uh, Stand in stand or pactitaxel coated balloons uh, are standard of care with a 1A recommendation in the ESC guidelines. The current treatment in the US consists of POBA, pachytherapy, or stand in stand. And the RESPECT ISR trial aims to investigate the safety and efficacy of the sequence please Rex DCP to support an FDA uh, pre market application. And um, the investigational device that will be used is the sequence please Rex, the next generation pactitaxel coated DCB based on the sequence please Neo DCB, which is available outside the US and have a very large clinical database. 
However, this uh, new DCB will use reservoir or troll as excipient instead of iopromide. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So there you are, ladies and gentlemen, you'll be uh, hearing, you have heard uh, four lectures or presentations on drug-coated balloon involving both PCB and also as uh, serolimus coated balloon. Uh, I would like to encourage the uh, attendees uh, to try and uh, go through the uh, chat and ask for questions and Dr. Professor Scheller will try to answer all of them. And in the meantime, we're going to uh, just uh, have a discussion among ourselves and, um, and I hope uh, you'll be able to uh, listen in and also to contribute in some ways. So, you know, the uptake uh, of uh, DCB is still rather small because of the presence of DES and people are so comfortable with uh, using stents and the results have been so good. So I just would like to you know, pose this question to both you, Raban and Sylvia. Uh, firstly, you to Raban, in, in terms of what is the usage of DCB in your clinical practice and what sort of clinical subsets are you using DCB right now? Raban? Yes, thank you, Rosalie. Um, it's a, I think it's a very um, important point that we really focus on, on specific uh, groups of patients. I think um, also we, we did a lot of DCB uh, in the last years. Uh, there are lots of uh, interventionalists, even in my, uh, in my hospital, that are not really comfortable with, uh, with DCB. Most, most people say um, that uh, um, they, they cannot be sure of the results. They cannot be sure uh, that the patient uh, has, uh, has a problem when he's on the ward or um, at home even. And I think uh, it's really important to stress the point that we have... Uh, really good data that support that um, DCB are safe in the basket. Small 2 trial, for example, we didn't have one case of acute vessel, cl uh, vessel closure. And therefore, uh, we are uh, really uh, happy that we have uh, quite a lot of, uh, of DCB interventions in my, in my clinic. Um, it's, it's uh, I think the, the two main or the three main indications are the instant restenosis, uh, in this, in this kind, is almost 100% um, DCB use. Then we have a lot of small vessels uh, in diabetic patients, for example, or patients with renal failure, dialysis patients. I think this is really a good, uh, a good indication. And the third big part are the, the, the bifurcations, where we, we really try to use the DCB in the, in the side arms. Uh, mostly we, we put the stent in the main branch, but in the, in the side branches, we try to use uh, the DCB uh, uh, as, as often as, as, as possible. Yeah. Sylvia, what about you? Yes, um, I can, or I agree with Raban in every aspect he just um, mentioned. I think the problem with um, using drug-coated balloons is um, that it does require some um, operator experience and, of course, um, it usually maybe takes a little longer than just go fast, put a stand in, you have a nice um, angiographic initial result and everybody is sure. Um, with DCB, you need that experience to judge um, dissections that you can leave behind um, without worrying, um, but you have to go through this um, learning curve to see that it's possible and that it works. So it's mm. highly dependent on the operator and um, highly dependent, I think, the percentage of usage um, on the center. I'm traditionally coming from a center due to my former colleague, um, Dr. Perna, that we have always used a lot of truck-coated balloons. And quite frankly, I always think about the usage of a truck-coated balloon in every um, intervention except for left main um, 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 for um, as a possible um, device. Uh, um, but of course, as um, Raban said, um, the main indications are instant restenosis. We use almost always a truck coated balloon there, um, small vessel disease, um, where, but even there, I am somebody who goes for like larger sizes. Um, I actually didn't even wanted to have balloons smaller than 2.5 uh, for the new score registry um, in our lab. And bifurcation is an important um, indication. I always try to do a single stand strategy because I do think it's better 
especially in bifurcation, to have less metal, <laughs> leave less metal behind. Um, and yes, and the rest is um, highly dependent on the operator. I think for patients with multi-vessel disease that are younger, that are not going to bypass surgery, um, I do think it is um, a feasible option to treat some of the lesions of tricorded balloon because you do not know how atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease develops the next few years and you still have the option to do everything with that, um, the, um, coronary, uh, with that coronary. But of course, if you have just a type A lesion, a short lesion, proximal lesion, um, then there's no need to really go for a tricorded balloon. Then you have, if you put in a big stent, we also know today the data is good that we have a very small percentage of um, target lesion failure. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if I were to extend the, uh, the question to you, uh, Siva, in terms of your uh, advice with people who want to, uh, you know, uh, utilize DCB, uh, what are the important steps? Do you, for example, uh, what is a, a, a ratio of the uh, device in in terms of vessel preparation to the vessel to uh, device to a vessel ratio, and do you tend to uh, suggest that you should use scoring balloon uh, in all your patients or just normal regular balloons? I think you should fo need to focus that you need uh, to use um, big enough balloons um, for lesion preparation, and that you even go beyond uh, um, the one point zero. Um, um, lesion to reference diameter um, ratio, we personally work more with 1.2 and um, maybe even higher. I don't agree with the consensus paper that is a little more um, yeah, um, conservative in this aspect. Um, and you can even um, use non-compliant balloons. I personally don't use scoring balloons that much except for instant restenosis. There, I think it's it's a given, it's good. For um, the novo stenosis, I don't think it, makes a big difference but maybe other people have different experience yeah. um, and I think also for the pre-dilation um, you need to have a long enough um, inflation time don't just do it for 10 seconds go for even there for 30 seconds or even longer um, yes those yeah, are this is cool. Robin, what about pre-dilation or preparation is good uh, is, do you do it the same way in terms of vessel preparation or is anything different um, no, um, actually, I'm, I'm doing the same. I think it's, it's really important um, as just as a, as a shift in thinking uh, that you really have a good result before you uh, deploy the DCB. We, we all know the discussions in the consensus papers and in all these conferences, uh, lesion preparation is key. And when you have a good result, then you can uh, deploy your balloon as a, as a carrier of the drug. However, the, the lesion preparation, uh, we, we always try um, to, to make it as simple as possible. I always start with a regular balloon. And if the result is acceptable, which is the case in almost 60 or 80 percent, then you can uh, directly go uh, to the, the DCB. However, when the result is, is not good, then we escalate to uh, non-compliant balloons or scoring balloons. But uh, having said that, uh, it's clear that one of the disadvantages of the technique is that you need more time, you need more, uh, more uh, equipment, you need more money. And I think uh, this is really uh, uh, one point uh, that we, we should discuss. I don't know what, what others think, but uh, um, I think this, uh, this, uh, this, this manner of preparing um, is, is uh, some financial disadvantage in the whole thing. Yeah. But uh, the, as uh, both of you mentioned, uh, what is key is vessel preparation. And this is where if you, you know, you know it's, it's not like we are putting in a stand where there's a scaffold, you can inflate and you get, uh, you get results. But with balloon, we are falling back to what we were practicing in the past. And you may not get as beautiful results as with stands, but in the end, if the results are good and with the data showing that uh, the risk of uh, uh, an acute or abrupt occlusion is going to be small and in the long term, the vessel will heal and you allow the vessel to come back and function normally. And there is a 70 odd percent chance as shown uh, in uh, papers pre uh, previously that the vessel can at least enlarge. So leaving nothing behind is I think, I think something very uh, attractive. One just needs to be a bit more patient with it. I think you will probably agree with it. Um, you know, we, 
we're discussing about serial illness coated balloon. Obviously, this is something of interest. Uh, you know, the, where where does as uh, serial illness coated balloon stand in your practice right now? Because there is not much of data. Do you think that at this point, uh, yes, do we have got commercially available uh, SCB? Whether it can be used comfortably, interchangeably with uh, PCB in these lesion subsets that you treat? What do you think, Sylvia? Well, I think um, I've shown you the overview. We do need more data right now. And I mean, we have a large evidence for pachytaxel coated balloons. So it doesn't, um, it's not really the time to just change the practice from pachytaxel coated balloons to serolimus coated balloons. I do think we need to gather data. We need to gather evidence. And if you use serolimus coated balloons at this time point, they should be included in some kind of trial registry um, and so that we generate evidence. And is that the same with you? Are we going to be uh, uh, cautious as, as it is at this point in time, uh, Robin? Um, I couldn't agree more with Sylvia. I think we need more data. However, I th I'm not a fun fundamentalist. I, I think both uh, drugs could be um, could be good for the patient. Um, uh, Paclitaxel could have some advantage uh, regarding the, the positive remodeling uh, in on the long run, which uh, Sarolin was. Um, might not have. Um, I'm not sure. I'm totally relying on the data. However, I think it's good to have several options. I think it's good that the ECB uh, strategy will have several options with uh, several uh, uh, drugs uh, uh, coating, and I think uh, this will uh, help the whole technique. Yeah. Sylvia, so with the yes. Yes. Just one uh, one um, aspect to mention from my side with my small experience so far with this oil was coated balloon. Uh, what I noticed is that um, the balloon itself um, or the product um, itself has a larger flexibility and a um, higher um, deliverability compared to paclitaxel coated balloons. So this might be an advantage, but of course we still have to see. Um, and as um, Raban said, I think it's like how it is with the truck eluding stands. We need it's nice to have a bigger portfolio and we need to see at the end um, after we have clear um, study data available what are advantages, disadvantages or maybe even the indications. And I think we, I will always, uh, I always will, um, or I will look um, at the data for um, the novo stenosis and instant risk stenosis. I have no idea, um, but maybe at the end we will have different products for different stenosis types. I don't know. Yeah. Now, uh, if I were to come back to uh, what we are currently using, which is with the Pachytaxel uh, coated balloons, uh, do you think it's enough, uh, we have got enough data right now, or rather enough experience to actually expand it beyond what is being suggested or recommended, especially in the de novo lesions, whereby, you know, stents will probably be good. So outside the small vessels, in a non-small vessel, do you think uh, we, it would be quite appropriate for us to try to practice using DCB, Raban? Yes, definitely. We we uh, this uh, I think this border of small to not so small is really a gray zone, and uh, we're using uh, the drug coated balloons in even larger vessels than three point oh. So we're really feeling comfortable with it. it I, I think it depends on the result after pre dilatation, and not so much on the on the vessel size. However, we have done the, the trial in small vessels, but uh, I. I know that uh, some new trials are coming in, in all comer uh, patients, and I really for, look forward for this, uh, for this data. Yeah. Uh, all right. So we are actually moving towards the end of the session. But uh, before we end, and before I give my concluding uh, remarks, uh, are there any uh, advice that you'd like to give uh, to our attendees with regards to using DCB? Robin, let's start with you first. Um, I think just try it. Uh, try to, to use DCB. Um, uh, I think there's a good chance that you get away without the stent. And if it's not working, then you still have the stents. It's a good good method. And the whole the two methods are co complementary. And so just try it. Yeah, good, good advice. Sylvia, what about you? I'm from me. I think you just need to overcome your internal hurdle of um, accepting a not non-stent-like um, result um, in the angio um, and to give a little bit more love and time 
and treating the patient and just doing something fast and easy. I think those are wise words uh, from both of you. Uh, so it gives me a, uh, my great pleasure to actually uh, summarize, uh, say some concluding remarks on uh, the session that we are having. Uh, firstly, what we had was uh, we've had a series of uh, presentations. We actually had a look and a review of uh, Pachytaxel coated balloon, and this was done by Professor Yeager. Uh, he emphasized uh, that there are meta analyses that has been conducted comparing uh, Pachytaxel coated balloon with alternative uh, therapy, and this includes uh, POBA, uh, DES, and also BMS. And uh, the long term efficacy and safety was actually proven. And uh, at least in that meta-analysis, it favored the pachytaxel coated balloon in the long term. Uh, the emphasis uh, of the concern of uh, DCB with regards to mortality was uh, apparently shown in uh, the treatment for uh, peripheral vascular disease, even though there are lots of uh, limitations in that study. But really, there is no increased risk of mortality that has been seen in patients treated with uh, uh, DCB in patients with coronary artery disease. So at least be assured that there is no increased mortality and the benefits are still there. Uh, Bruno also touched on the perspective, uh, or rather the respect to ISRUS uh, investigational device exemption trial. And hopefully this will actually help to, to get the CE mark for the use of DCB in US where they have uh, not been able to uh, received uh, the, uh, or rather to, to accept or use the device that is now currently being used worldwide, especially for instant restenosis, which is a type A, indi a 1A indication. We also, uh, you know, the two speakers also discuss, and I also showed uh, our uh, use of serolimus coated balloon, the first in men for the SISR and also the large uh, score registry that is ongoing. Dr. Sylvia just uh, show, uh, shared with me that she recruited a sixth patient just now. So hopefully we'll get them um, to see the use of uh, SCB in a large uh, all commons trial and see the use uh, and benefits of uh, SCB or serolimus coated balloon in the future. Um, we also discussed a bit and uh, discussed a bit the uh, uh, con concerns of utilization of uh, serolimus coated balloon with the current uh, data that is made available. And uh, just a bit of caution because you, we don't have enough data to actually say just because uh, SCB is there, you can replace a pegataxel coated balloon in uh, the subset of patients uh, lesions that we use right now. So a matter of a word of caution with it, we just need to have more data before we can actually embark freely on the use of drug coated balloon. Um, I hope, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you have gained an, uh, further insight uh, in the treatment of uh, coronary disease using both uh, therapies, the pachytaxel coated balloon, and of course, the serolimus coated balloon, which is uh, still in its uh, infancy with regards to data and trials. I would, as both speakers, encourage you to consider DCB uh, in your practice because if you, you just need to have a bit more patience and when you have, uh, you properly prepare the vessel very well, you find that your results will be much better. Remember, DCB is only to deliver the drug and not to, vessel, uh, to prepare the vessel. So prepare the vessel very well. When you have a vessel which is well prepared as being uh, suggested, less than 30% resistances, no uh, dissection which is flow limiting, then use, you can use DCB and you find that uh, you feel uh, uh, you know, you know, encouraged and comforted that uh, once you get good results, and at least with every experience, with every uh, confidence, it will then propel you to try to use uh, and think about using DCB much further. Because in the end, what is attractive is that you leave nothing behind. I would like to thank uh, the speakers uh, for their kind presentation. Uh, obviously, the chat master, Bruno, I wish that he was also here with us. And uh, B. Brown for this, uh, uh, you know, for sponsoring this and to Europe PCR. So I hope to see you all again in the future. Thank you very much.